Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be for my Red Sox fans. This is going to be the Boston Red Sox season projection video. As I say this multiple times um, on my channel, whether it's for hockey, whether it's for football, whether it's for baseball, whether it's for basketball, I don't judge anything off of the first few games of the season. Obviously, it's not the start you want in Sox Nation going on two against the arch rival Yankees. But it also is what it is, and the kid Tanner Hoke is going to be pitching tonight, and I think he has a chance to have a very good game against Jordan Montgomery. But this is a video not previewing that game. This is a video that is looking at the season ahead for the Boston Red Sox and how I think they will fare out against the rest of the division. I mean, when it comes to their first couple games, uh, yesterday I didn't even think uh, Nick Pavetta pitched too shabby. It was just a first game. It was one of those first game things where uh, in his first game, he had moments of sharpness, and then he had the walks. The four, I think it was four walks, or was it th three walks, the four earned runs, and then the two home runs because of leaving the pitches kind of just out over the zone. But he showed the moments of Pavetta of last year and then the moments of the struggle bunny, which is kind of what you get with Pavetta, and it's a first start. So I think it also showed when he harnesses the control more, that game would have probably been six and two-thirds seven innings more so than him pitching five and two-thirds and giving up the four. So I was A-OK -okay with uh, what we saw from Nick Pavetta. Uh, I, I think it was perfectly fine. And then, obviously, though, going forward, you're going to need to have the lineup, which is key. The Red Sox lineup is going to need to continue to get better because you can't have a game that when you give up four from your starter, you still can't score more than two. This lineup definitely has the capability to score way more than two runs. And then five runs is actually a good game. That was just the, let's not even get into how much I hate that extra running rule. And I hate shootouts in hockey, similar to how I hate putting a guy on second base and changing the way the game, which just completely is um, pretty much. But it is what it is. Uh, the Red Sox lost the first game in extra innings. Also, they should have, they could have, so I can't really blame the extra rule per se because we could have took advantage of it as well and try and scored, but um, it is what it is. It, I, I just really hate the uh, extra inning rule because they were able to, I mean, we took advantage in the top of the 10, obviously, on a great hit by Bogey, but other than that, they were able to get it twice. They had the far better advantage, the home team getting it in the bottom half, obviously, to have the walk-off potential, that I don't think that's a very fair trade. That's the that's the thing there, where you could even argue in hockey, the home team doesn't necessarily have a far better advantage in a freaking shootout, because it's just who has the most skill. But with that, with that, with baseball, the home team does have the far better advantage when it comes to that rule, and I think it's kind of Bush League rule, and I think it's stupid, and hopefully it doesn't stick. But when it comes to the overall season for our Boston Red Sox, I think it is going to shape out pretty well because Tanner Hoke, who's pitching this evening in the game on ESPN, that I'm going to, it's going to be the game that the other games I had to watch over on MLB TV for covering hockey and doing other things that I've been busy with. But um, the Red Sox, though, I think overall in the season, they're going to be fine. I do think the Red Sox are a playoff team. Do I think they're a division winning team this year? That I don't necessarily think coming into the season with how strong the rest of the division got, and this is going to be a kind of a bloodbath battle division. But I thought Evaldi in his first game pitched fine. Again, it was like moments of greatness from him and then moments of struggle bunny, which happens in the first game just like it did for Pavetta. Um, I think uh, Cutter Crawford and how he pitches, obviously, is going to be one of those wild card pieces. If you get him going really well at the bottom of your rotation, that even helps you out more. And then Waka's a massive wild card piece because if you get anything of the old Michael Waka, even to like a 3-9 ERA, but he has the moments of flashing, then that would be great. Uh, but the, the hitting, I'm not really concerned because I think Christian Arroyo, he had the run last year. I think he can swing. He's not going to wow you, but I think he can swing the stick solidly. Uh, Jonathan Arose, uh, he's obviously a contact hitter, so it's going to be interesting to see what he can continue to do. Dahlbeck brings the pop. Devers is a great all-around hitter. Shaw brings the pop. Trevor Story is a great all-around hitter. This lineup, I'm not concerned at all. Scored five in the first game, two in the second game. Now let's see what they can do in this game here. Jackie Bradley Jr. is obviously more of a fielder than a hitter at this point, but Enrique Hernandez, Kike can hit really well. Verdugo can hit really well, and J.D. Martinez has shown still that he can hit really well. So the lineup isn't concerning at all to me. 
it's going to be interesting to see how the rotation continues to do throughout the rest of the season because I have confidence in Evaldi, Pavetta, and Hoke. Um, when it comes to the rest, we got to see how Cutter Crawford pitches, and obviously we have to see how Michael Walker pitches. But the bullpen, also good um, with Robles, with Whitlock, with Valdez, uh, with Strom, and others. Obviously, you got Barnes, Brazier, so I think they're set there. Jake Diekman, fantastic pitch up. They also have Rich Hill for the starting rotation, but Rich Hill is also 42, so he's kind of like your Jamie Moyer type, that what you get from him is just terrific, uh, but a great guy to have in your locker room. So, I think this team is poised for a playoff run. In terms of the division, I don't know if they're poised coming in just with how disgusting of a roster and some of the other teams have assembled top to bottom, especially when it comes to the Blue Jays. Obviously, the Rays got off to a great start under the Tampa Bay Rays. You always find a will and a way. Um, so, I think those would kind of be the teams. I don't even think the Yankees, honestly, are the team that I would give a favor to to win the division either. I think it's honestly between the Blue Jays and the uh, Rays, in my own opinion, the two T's, and then whoever's able to be better between this arch rival, which I think has a chance to be great this year, is going to be the third playoff team of the division, I think. I think it's going to come down to who's better against each other. Not the best start for the Sox, but again, it's the first couple games, so I'm not overreacting to that. I think our Red Sox are a playoff team, and I think it's going to come down to who's the best with the Yankees-Sox matchups or who's the best overall between those two teams in the end, however way you want to slice it, because I think Toronto and Tampa have the best chance to win the division. But also, I wouldn't be surprised if Boston's able to get it going to win the division, because I think it would be they are really doing really well. The young pitching's really doing well. You got Pavetta, you got Evoldi and Hope doing well, but then you have either Crawford or Rich Hill pick pitch uh, like he's 32 instead of 42 or something like that, and that kind of all comes to fruition, and then you add another pitcher and so on and so forth. But I think the Red Sox are playoff bound. That would be my projection for them. I would say going in, I kind of have them third in the division playoff bound because of the expanded playoff, but with the potential to obviously – rise if they continue to kind of hit more consistently to that first game rather than the second game of the season then they'll be set but they also have to pitch um a little bit more consistently to the way Evaldi was able to battle compared to Pavetta who again is his first start I thought he did fine but if they do that too much this year this Sox team it's not going to be the best position for them because they don't have the deepest rotation so to speak but peace out everybody stay safe Obviously, I think this was a good projection for the Red Sox. I have them in the playoffs. I don't have them higher than third right now, but this is a fluid thing. In a month or two, I could have them higher than third because the Blue Jays could fall off the planet or Tampa could fall off the planet or the Yankees could fall off the planet, or hopefully it doesn't go reverse, but it could go reverse. But for right now, in the first month of the season coming in, I'm not overreacting to an 0-2 start. I still think this team is playoff bound. Hell of a lineup. Obviously, the pitching is going to come and hopefully it continues to grow. Tanner Hoke, I think, is going to be a joy to watch again this year. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please you subscribe down below or above these these widgets. Keep us growing to 230 or more by the end of April. Really appreciate your love and support this far.